Hello world and welcome to Elevated Intuition. It is time for our October 19th through the 25th weekly predictions, weekly tarot predictions. If you see a pile that you are drawn to, one, two, and three, um, please check the timestamps down below and I will meet you at your pile. Otherwise, I'll give you a little bit more information here about the plants I have connected with each pile. First of all, these are all succulents. Uh, and this one, pile one is an Andromiscus masculatus or calico hearts. This one, um, you can see that it has like this maroon coloring on the outside here. The more time that it spins in the sun, the more prominent these like maroon colors appear. Here you can see that it has like two different color greens, but this will actually turn maroon in the sunlight. It is called a calico hearts because of the calico coloring. And then here, this is probably the best one that looks like a little heart. So that's where that one gets its name. Next, we have a Hoya Carry. It is variegated. This is actually just one leaf. It is one leaf with um, roots. It can have multiple leaves, but usually you will just see it with the one leaf. It's really popular around Valentine's Day because of the heart shape. Actually, all of these have like a Valentine's Day connection. It doesn't necessarily have to do with the uh, cards. And finally, we have these little guys. These are Echeveria Harmisi or Ruby Slippers. And these guys, they are mighty, but or they are small, but they are mighty. Um, I actually, this, this can get up to like 12 inches tall. I actually beheaded these recently. Don't worry, that is something you do with succulents. Um, the leaves are fuzzy and like this Andromiscus, the red color on the outside gets more prominent with the more sun that it gets. These, like I said, I recently beheaded and that just means that I sipped them off of a plant and um, kind of really cut them back and when they grew some roots, I just put them in this little container. So thank you for letting me ramble about plants and I will meet you at your pile. Hello, pile one. If you picked the Andromiscus masculatus, AKA Calico Hearts, you are in the right place. Um, I have several tarot cards here for us. I have some moon cards and I have um, an Everyday Witch Oracle card. A couple things to mention before we get started that this may or may not affect the tarot cards is this week we are in New Moon in Libra. That started, well, the New Moon in Libra was um, October 16th, so we're going from a new moon to a full moon. This is a great time to manifest things, to bring new things into your life as the moon gets fuller over this season. And the full moon is on Halloween, October 31st. So that's something to look forward to. Libra is an air sign, so if you're looking for peace, harmony, um, clarity in your thoughts, balance, cooperation. Those are the types of things that are really powerful to manifest during, um, well, from the new moon from Libra to um, a full moon. We also have Mercury retrograde. Mercury re retrograde on October 13th. And it will be retrograde until election day for the U.S. That is November 3rd. These Mercury retrograde um, can cause some issues. So just be careful with people with communication, technology, travel, those kinds of things can be pretty unpredictable with Mercury retrograde. It's also in Scorpio, which means that um, it's going to be pulling up some things. Um, you'll probably notice that with, you know, the election season in, in full swing anyway. So, um, hidden truths, you know, there's always, what do they call it? The October surprise. So just use your intuition as to whether those things affect you or are real, or you should pay attention to them. So we have, let's take a look at our tarot cards. 
The first one that I have for you is the King of Fire. Lovely. Um, next one, ooh, Ego. Um, this is the Six of Air. So I just mentioned travel might be unpredictable. Um, this card can indicate travel. <laughs> uh, okay, and then we have the Emperor. And final tarot card that we have is the um, Page of Air. So first off, let's see, we have two air cards. Um, I, I mentioned that this can, is about travel. It's also about moving away from things. Um, and then this one is Page of Air. Uh, the, the bottom sentence on this is review all documents very clearly. This is also about delayed news. So something can be delayed. Um, I'm feeling like that could be very related to Mercury retrograde because, um, you know, you could be expecting something. It's supposed to be on time and something happens. Like I said, that was unpredictable. Let's look at these guys from the beginning. So Let's talk about the King of Fire. So the King of Fire, um, on here it says motivational, inspiring, theatrical, ambitious. Take a leadership role. Step into the spotlight. Public speaking. Keep your eye on the big picture. Communicate your vision. Don't be sensitive to criticism. This is a really good position for you to be in. A couple things with the King here. Um, if you take a look at his throne, we've got some dragons, um, lions here. We also have a salamander. All of that is related to passion and fire. I just noticed this on his staff. If you are Harry Potter fans, um, that looks like a golden snitch to me. That could also be, I'm laughing because um, Carl Jung, a uh, wing his winged chaos and his works on alchemy. Um, it's the container of primordial material from, from which the earth is made. So uh, that's a little bit above my pay grade to decode Carl Jung. Um, he is a very, was a very famous Swiss psychiatrist. And a very, you know, if you've heard about Freud, Jung is, is along those lines of, of thinkers. But but really what's important here, I suppose, is just that if you are powerful enough to have a staff with uh, Carl Jung's winged chaos at the top of it, um, you know, it's, it's pretty powerful. Um, it also speaks to like some manifestations that you are capable of manifesting things. Right now, I think I, when I was talking about the new moon, you know, when it goes from the new moon to the full moon, the moon is getting bigger. It is a, a good time to manifest things, to think about things to, um, in that way. So this is a pretty stable character. Let me think if there's anything else that I am missing. Um, he is good at managing people, directing people. You know, a lot of the fire signs are about passion and enacting things yourself, but he is, he is more of like... Um, big picture person, um, and like I said, uh, managing things. You know, he's sitting on the throne directing others. Next, we have the ego. So I love how this deck handles ego. In other decks, this might be the devil card. Don't don't be afraid of that. Let's talk, let's let's see what it represents because the the imagery on the devil card is is pretty, um, you know, it's, it's got a devil on there, so it's kind of it's a little scary. But this talks about the illusion of being trapped. You know that you are trapped, but it's an illusion. And right here, this is Archangel Michael coming in to cut that for you. This is accept responsibility for your situation and make choices that support your path to happiness. Um, it could also represent addictions or unhealthy habits. So I'm feeling like 
I was just looking to see if you had any pentacle cards because that that is related to health and you don't. Um, but you might want to take a look at what it is that might be holding you back. Like if you do not feel like you are this king, like you, you definitely have this inside of you. If you're not stepping into your power and if you're not feeling like you are this king, well, what is holding you back from that? And it is something that you do have power over. You do have control over it because, I mean, even if it's something like, like a heavy addiction to like alcohol, something like that, yeah, it's not going to be easy to cut these, these things that hold you back, these chains, but you are the one in control of it. And a lot of times, you know, they talk about addicts and I, I'm not saying that you are necessarily an addict. I mean, we could be talking about, um, an, an addiction to caffeine here. So don't, <laughs> so it could be just that simple, just something that like maybe you are using as a crutch to get through your day that isn't necessarily the healthiest for you and, and evaluating those things. This is also talking about your shadow self. Um, sexuality could be one thing. If you, you know, need to come out to someone, I mean, she almost looks like she is coming out here. This is your your go ahead to do that to live your truth. So your shadow self too, and ego itself is kind of a, a barrier between you living your life to the fullest, you doing what what you need to do um, to get the most out of life, and and it could your ego, you know, is your pride, and and sometimes. Your pride holds you back. Sometimes you need to build up pride and able to get over something. But sometimes, you know, you've made your mind up on, on a something or a situation and it is holding you back. And this is about evaluating that and looking at your, like I said, your shadow self. Um, your ego is what you're projecting to the world. And is it really who you are? Are you who you are on Instagram, for instance? Are you who you are on Facebook? Is that really healthy for you? And are you doing, are you projecting that image for a reason? Are you projecting it for a certain person? And you know, some of that is okay, but really you need to look inside and you need to project it for yourself. Um, you know, I mentioned Carl Jung earlier, and this kind of reminds me, since I, I ha I'm thinking about him, um, one of the things that he said is, I am not what happened to me, I am what I choose to become. Um, sometimes, you know, some things that are holding us back is, is you know, an unfortunate circumstance to happen to us. And we have to think about that and rise above it um, and, and proceed. Um, and the other thing with addiction here and unhealthy habits that I'm thinking about is your short-term pleasure versus long-term pain. So yeah, you know, I might, it might feel good for me right now to go into McDonald's and have some French fries, but in the long run, is that really the best for me? So just things like that. So that's what is talking about. And I know that it's kind of strange going from this really powerful figure to this, but I'm feeling like you aren't reaching your full potential because this is a lot of potential here and there's reasons why. And it's your ego holding you back. But then we have the six of air coming in. The end of challenging times, things are looking up. A welcome relief, finding your way to a peaceful place. An end of deep depression or an illness, travel or relocation. So, you know, this is just a weak time frame, and maybe you have been battling about, or you've been thinking about this subconsciously for a while. Um, but I think that, you know, this, the six of air coming in after the ego is really positive sign that you are going to move past it 
and that you can get past whatever thing that's over here that's challenging you that might be holding you back this week. And it's something, you know, obviously this is a major arcana card, this ego. So it's not just like, okay, this happened this week. I'm only eating French fries this week. That's not what's happening. It's just that this week you are choosing to take steps to move past it. And once you get past it, look what's waiting for you on the other side. It's the emperor. I mean, how can you get better than the king, right? The king is really powerful. I mean, he's got the golden snitch right here. He looks pretty good positioned, but how do you top that? Oh yeah, well, the emperor. <laughs> Logic and organization will increase your success. Take charge of the situation. Accept a leadership role, structure and discipline. So a lot of times when we are trying to get past an unhealthy habit, Unfortunately, or fortunately, if you're OCD, um, structure and di discipline will help us do that. Make a plan, set a goal. This is also um, Archangel Michael. <laughs> these are angel cards, so they, they go back to angels. Both of these have Archangel Michael on it, so he's helping you battle here. And then um, he is showing you that you can be the emperor. You have the world in your hands. So he has this, this wonderful light sword that um, can help you. So if you are in a challenging situation and you know Archangel Michael can help you through that. The other thing is, oh, these cards are very related. If you, I, we walked through, it was on his throne. Take a look at the emperor's throne. He has rams on here, which, um, are for Aries, which is, um, he is, he is, yes, he is the God of war, but he is, um, he's got fire energy behind him. So you're transforming your fire energy to something even more powerful. And this is when you look internally at your unhealthy habits and move past them. Finally, we have the page of air. So logical, perceptive, insightful, blunt, an exciting intellectual challenge, brilliant insights, information that you need, but may be challenging to receive. Um, review all documents very carefully. So I feel like this is very related to what I was talking to earlier with uh, Mercury Retrograde, that you know you may be looking to make a move and it doesn't feel like it's working out well you have the page of air here it's just letting you know that there it's information is challenging to receive there the so delayed information here um, review all of your documents carefully so if you are buying a house or you know even just doing something like signing up online for classes Review those documents and make sure you know what you're getting into. Um, for instance, like I signed up for some classes online and I didn't realize they were like an auto renew thing. So just, just simple things like that. Otherwise, it looks like a pretty good week. Looks like really interesting things happening here. For our lunar cards, we have the void, and this is the dark moon, the void. So the dark moon is right be before the new moon. The new moon was October 16th, so timing-wise, the dark void was October 15th. So I know that was last, actually it happened last, last week. Um, and then we have uh, 44 supermoon attraction. I feel like this is a really good placement for the void right over ego um, because this is about resting, but it's also about releasing things that no longer serve you. And ego, this is letting go of things that no longer serve you. So your time to rest and reset is here. Release, release all that does not serve you. Stop resisting. The void is a time of possibility, not just darkness, 
There is nothing to fear in letting go of negative patterns and habits, so let go of the old. And the mantra here is, I freely release what I no longer need. Next, we have attraction. I feel like this is really connected to the king and the emperor. Both of them are leaders. You, This is coming in really strongly that you are, you're a leader. Um, and maybe that's why there might be a little bit of, I don't want to say shame, but for lack of a better word, that you have something here that maybe isn't perfect that you need to let go of, or maybe even just the idea that they, everything is perfect. But don't worry about that because you are a leader and people are attracted to you. You can be magnetic to others and attract the good things in life. You can um, rep repeal what you no longer wish to attract. That's important. Um, repeal what you no longer wish to attract. So it's not even... You can use this law of attraction and attract all the great things that you want in your life. And by doing that, that like pushes out these bad things that you no longer want. So it's not just, it's not about focusing on the bad, actually. It's about focusing on the good things that you want for your life. So you know what you don't want? Yes, okay? Sometimes the step to getting rid of what you don't want is thinking about what you do want and attracting that. Avoid extremes that may that might cause negative imbalance in your body or mind. Think of connections greater than yourself. I feel like a leader really does that. I feel like you as the king and you as the emperor, you already do think of things that are greater than yourself. And um, here in the six of air, I feel like you have a family to think about as well. The mantra here is, I can attract what I wish and repel what I do not. Like I said, this time between the new moon and the full moon is really fantastic for manifesting what you want. Finally, we have this card, Listen to Wisdom. Wis okay, so just looking at it really quickly, with this bird coming in, like a little bird told, told you, ancient wisdom, like wisdom like that you hear from the wind. This is very much related to these two cards. Also, it's interesting to this um, listening to wisdom. It, uh, it talks about like wisdom of the universe. Definitely somebody like who are you going to listen to? Um, not like the comments and Facebook on some some crap post. That's not what this is about. This is about the wisdom of the universe. This is about your internal wisdom. When you were here being represented by the king and the emperor, like you need to just shut out social media and listen to your heart, listen to what you want. Um, it reminds me of this card here where it says, don't be sensitive to criticism. Most of the people who criticize you are below you. They're not in the position to tell you anything. And this wisdom that's coming in is definitely above you. This is positive. This is what, you know, where where are you going here? This wisdom is telling you that, like where you need to flow in your life, where you go from the king to the emperor, where you get through a challenging week where you're not getting the information that you're desiring. We spend a lot of time surrounding ourselves with noise, television, phones, even our own voices. It can be hard to hear anything above the constant hum and buzz of, hum and buzz of every day. But sometimes you have to take time to be quiet and listen. Really listen. Maybe the universe or the gods have been trying to tell you something that you haven't been able to hear it. Maybe it is your own inner wisdom that is crying out to be heard. How will you know if you don't take time to listen? I feel like this is telling you that you need to take time to meditate it's very related to the void where you are thinking about things that you need to let go of and shed 
and it is going to guide you. This wisdom is going to guide you um, with this ego card of what you are letting go, where you are leaving, and where you are going to. I think that's all that I have for you, group one. Um, please let me know how your week goes. This lo actually looks like a really good and productive week. I know some things here are challenging, but um, one thing that I think about with this ego card, and this is, what, this is what I'm saying is challenging, is when I was in college, the, what we used to always say is if you are uncomfortable, you are not learning. And I feel like, yeah, letting go of some things that aren't serving you any longer, that process is uncomfortable, but getting you from that to where you want to go, where you need to go, where your goals are is, is so important. And I really don't think that it's going to be that difficult for you. I think that you are, you're going to be able to do it. And if you listen to your wisdom and meditate about it and realize that you are a leader and people are attracted to you, you got this. So if you like this reading, please give it a thumbs up. And Hello, group two. If you picked the Hoya Carry Variegated, you are in the right place. Oh, oh, a few things that I wanted to mention before we get started that we have going on cosmically this week is, one, we are in Mercury Retrograde. So that started on October 13th. Mercury Retrograde deals with communication and technology and travel. So those things can be unpredictable. So just a word of caution that may or may not relate to these cards. And two, we had a new moon on October 16th. So this time from the new moon to the full moon, and the full moon is on October 31st, is a great time to manifest new things into your life. So let's take a look and see what the cards say. The first one is the Page of Earth. The second one is Renewal. Card number three, we have Ten of Fire. Card number four, we have Ten of Cups. And the final card here, final tarot card anyway, we have the High Priestess. So first thoughts that I have going on here is you have two tens, um, which are completions. So, and then these are, you know, we have renewal and a, a page, which are kind of new beginnings. So you have like new beginnings going on and then you have things completing. So those things seem to be overlapping this week which is why I think we have these guys first before that. Um, the page of earth is about manifestation. So scholarly, cheerful, dependable, mischievous. Um, I mean, she's got a rabbit here in the library. So yeah, mischievous. Time to get to work. An excellent opportunity presents itself. Happy news about your career promotions or scholarships, a new area of study. So if you have been thinking about like taking a new class, getting some new skills, like this is your invitation to do it, this page of earth. This is about possibilities and new beginnings. It does not guarantee the result. You're going to have to put the work in to get that result that you want. But definitely there is, if you want to manifest um, financial opportunities, this is your invitation to do it. And I had just spoke about the new moon to the full moon manifesting things. So right here, we've got some growth out of this little plant. Obviously, we're very connected to plants here. Um, this is your invitation to, you know, put... Do something material. Um, also, Earth deals with material things. I don't neglect your body. So this might be a time to implement a new um, fitness program, new eating, just do things slowly. Um, that is something that could be important for you. So do not neglect that either. Next, we have Renewal. 
This is in um, traditional tarot judgment, but I like how this deck handles renewal. Um, reviewing the past with um, compassion and forgiveness. Time to head in a new direction. Clarity on your life purpose. In your heart, you know what to do. So I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit to this High Priestess because both of these cards are very much connected to possibly a spiritual journey. You may be questioning where you are on your life's path. Is your job serving you, like serving your highest purpose? Like, yes, maybe it's feeding your family and it's giving you a place to go every day, but how do you feel about that? Are you really passionate about it? And that might be why you are looking at new opportunities here to grow, like learning some new skills so that you can find purpose in what you are doing every day. Renewal can also speak that you are close to an epiphany. Um, Oprah talks about, you know, an aha moment. You are close to that. So if you are seeking that, if you're like, have an issue that you've been thinking about and you're not quite sure how it's going to work out, this is saying that you are close. And maybe that's why you want to study as well. Because you're like, hmm, I've got this issue. I've got this problem that I'm working on. I don't really know what to do with it. You're going to get there. You're close, very, very close to it. Um, the other thing that it could talk about is sharing your struggles with others. If you have a community, it could be even an online community. There's some really great mom groups that I'm in. So, it does, you know, I share my struggles um, about... Um, parenting there and but make sure that it's definitely a productive group that it's a place for you are getting um, su actual support and not just you know you say I'm having this issue and it's not working out and people just jump on you <laughs> for asking because the people love to do that so if you have a very supportive community you may want to share your struggles because you can inspire others and you can rise together. Like a, a rising tide raises all boats. And I was talking about struggles and here we have the 10 of fire and this is about struggles. This is working, working too hard or too many hours, the need for balance in life, let others help you, health problems due to stress. What did I say over here with the, with the page that this is possibly a good time to do something new with a fitness program or how you're eating um, because we don't want to go through some health problems. So if you are, it's time to address that. The other thing is, and this may be why you are looking for some meaning in what you're doing, is you are working too hard at what you're doing. It's This is a heavy burden, but the, the good thing here is that this is a 10, which indicates that there, it's completion. You're getting to the end. Um, this also makes me think of the 80-20 rule. And if you haven't heard about that, and it's just, you know, those aren't hard and fast numbers. It's just a rough estimate. 80% of your success is dependent on 20% of your work. So where that comes in here with this highest burden, so where that comes in here with this, this burden is, like you might be stressing over like the little details to get your project or whatever it is that you're trying to, to accomplish to the completion point of where you think it needs to be. But if you focus your 20% of your effort on um, the most critical things, like the most foundational things, so you, obviously you have to have a hierarchy of your project or whatever you're doing to complete. If you focus on those core things, like, and just focus 20% of it, like that other 80% kind of falls into place. 
basically work smarter, not harder, and take your expectations down to a manage manageable level. This also can talk about needing help. And look at this, you have help on the way. So if this burden has anything to do with your family, your family is here to support you because this 10 of water is a very, very beautiful card. It's one of the best cards in tarot. It's such a beautiful omen. Um, a happy marriage, happily ever after, emotional contentment, a loving relationship with your children, um, raising children wisely and successfully, people you can trust. So even if you don't have, even if you're not married or you don't have children involved, this is just a really beautiful omen that, you know, your family is more than just your blood relations. It can be your friends as well. And they are here to support you. Even sometimes it's the people that you work with. I love this rainbow here. Um, you know, it just reminds me of somewhere over the rainbow and I'm the, the Israel is IZ, um, and I can't pronounce his last name. I can't, <laughs> he is from Hawaii, or he what? Uh, unfortunately, he passed on. But if you listen to his version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow, it's just magical. It's really beautiful, and it's very harmonious. And that's what I'm getting from this card as well. Um, troubles melt like lemon drops. So just think about that, that um, there's some things that you just got to let go, let go of your burden, ask for help, realign your expectations, and your troubles are going to melt like lemon drops. And finally, we have the high priestess. So meditate and turn inward to discover your soul's true desire. This is not a time for action. Develop your intuitive gifts and trust the wisdom you receive. So two things that I'm really noticing. First of all, I already talked about its relation, this high priestess card relation to renewal. But take a look at the page here. Both of them are studying or reading books, but really the high priestess is kind of like the apex of that. She just has the one book and I'm pretty sure she's the one who wrote it, who wrote it. So it's really interesting that you have this card and this card like book ending your week that you, you know, maybe you aren't going to get to the high priestess, this hyper level of knowing by the end of the week, but it's there, it's coming and you can do it. Um, it, when I pulled this page card out and I said, you know, this is not a guarantee of your result. Well, <laughs> you have to work at it. If you work at it, you are going to get to this high priestess level. The other thing that I'm noticing with these cards is really interesting is this, this could be the same lady here um, that, you know, you may feel burdened, but if you let your family help you, if you let your troubles melt like lemon drops, you can really be in command of your situation and um, meditate about what you really need to do. She says, turn inward here, not a time for action. So really think about the things that you are carrying with you and do you really need to carry them? Do you need, should you let them go? So think about your values, the things that you value. Another thing worth noting is that the high priestess here is very connected to the moon. Cancer rules the moon, so you might be a cancer, or if you don't feel like you're the high priestess and you're getting help from the high priestess, that might be um, someone in your life who has the astrological sign of cancer. It may not be related to everybody. Oh, and then we have a shooting star. <laughs> Very beautiful. Okay, so let's take a look at the lunar cards here. We have beauty and fear. Very cool. Um, this beauty card speaks about natural beauty. It's not, you know, in, in this high priestess aligning with your inner self and inner beauty 
And then we have fear. You know, fear holds us back a lot. It's interesting, this person in this bubble here looks very, very much like this 10 of fire that is having, that is going through some burden sometimes. A lot of times we need to let go of fear to move forward. It, it ties us back. It holds us back sometimes. Hello again. I was in the middle of talking about the beauty card, so let's jump back into this. Sorry, my, um, my camera shut off. Mercury retrograde, right? Um, so this beauty card, it is related to, I mean, obviously this is talks about natural beauty and beauty as, you know, a form of nature and healing, um, surround yourself with beauty to help you heal is one thing that it talks about. The mantra for this card, I see beauty everywhere and it rises my vibration. So this is going to help you like just looking for beauty, seeing beauty, surrounding yourself by it. One thing that I love about this particular card and what it talks about is one of the important differences between the ancient pagan and modern idea of beauty is that the old ways state that there is a need for the core of the self to develop and strengthen to enable to foster true beauty. And I really love that, especially in this reading. I mean, that's just a great thing anyway, is talking about your inner self and developing your inner self and looking inward for true beauty. And I think our um, Paige over here knows this and she is developing her true beauty to rise to this level of the high priestess over there. We also have the fear card. So fear holds us back a lot. Um, this card is also an 11, which you see these, both of these cards are 10, which signify completion. 11 is a new beginning. The page is technically an 11 card. And we need to let go of fear to move forward. I mean, sometimes we have a healthy fear. And an example of that is, you know, I wear my seatbelt when I get into my car because I have a fear of a traffic accident. And that is a healthy fear. But there are fears that don't serve us. And those are the kinds of things that we need to let go. Maybe the fear of being perfect or the fear, whatever we're carrying around with us, like the fear of what other people are going to think if we let these things drop. But sometimes we just need to let them, them let those fears go so that we can grow. And that's okay. So it's really talking about thinking with what fear is serving us and um, what is not and letting go of the things that are no longer serving us in, in fear. The final card I have for us is Affirmation for Acceptance. I love this card in this reading as well because we've got like this triangle of ladies reading books. So if you get nothing else, if nothing else resonates from this reading this week, I hope it's like, hey, let's pick up some, um, let's get some book time. Let's pick it up and read and learn something new. Affirmation for acceptance though is, it goes with that prayer, um, grant me the serenity, God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. Sometimes no matter how hard we try, there are circumstances or realities that we can't alter. You know, we have illnesses, broken relationships, lost jobs, um, Unfortunately, those things happen and a lot of things are out of our control and, you know, that's okay. It can be difficult not to keep fighting, but sometimes battle, battling the unchangeable just uses up time and energy that will be better used in more productive ways. Sometimes what we are really need is, sim is simply the serenity to accept the things we cannot change and the wisdom to know when it is time to do so. And I feel like this is really, really related to
to this center card here, this 10 of fire that, you know, it just becomes a burden a lot of times when you are fighting uphill, 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 almost Prometheus, right? He's, was he the one who kept rolling? Yes. Didn't he give fire? He gave fire to um, humans and his punishment was to roll a boulder uphill over and over and over again. And just when he would get there, it would roll back down the hill. So he had to keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that. Well, luckily you are not him. You have the opportunity to jump out of that cycle and let some things go. Stop rolling that boulder that you know is never going to reach the top and um, take a look at your values and realign your values and and where you want to go. Um, this is about very much in line with with values and um, spiritual growth. And I really see a beautiful week. Um, obviously, it's not going to be a perfect week. It's not going to be an easy week. Um, you're not sitting on the beach, but you know what? You have some really great things. Yes, you've got some fears to let go of, but you have people who love and support you. You have a lot of potential here um, for growth and for, you know, you've got this epiphany coming. You are just so close. And right here with these, these, these things completing, and this is not that, you know, your, your family isn't completing, but it's not like it's a support system for you. It's a support structure for you. You're not. And like I said, it's family doesn't have to be biological. It can be your work family. It can be your friends, but you have, you have these people supporting you. You have this, um, this gold at the end of the rainbow and definitely check out is in his rendition of somewhere over the rainbow and let those um, troubles melt like lemon drops. Let those fears melt like lemon drops and um, find that find that beauty. That's all I have for you, group two. I hope you found this beneficial. I hope it resonates. It's actually a really beautiful reading and I wish you a fantastic week. I wish you a fantastic week. Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe. Comment to me. Let me know what you're letting go, what kind, what your epiphany is. I would love to know that. And just have a fantastic week. Thank you. Hello, group three. If you picked these lovely little Echeveria Harmsy, aka Ruby slippers, you are in the right place. So a few things that I wanted to talk about that are going on cosmically, if you will. Um, that may or may not relate to your tarot cards is one, we are in Mer Mercury retrograde that started on October 13th. It's Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. That means that there are going to be a lot of things coming up that are being uncovered. Um, a lot of mysteries being uncovered. Um, we are also on the 16th on October 16th was the new moon from October 16th to the 31st, which is the full moon, is a beautiful time to manifest new things into your life. And this new moon is, is, was in Libra. So the things that you can manifest into your life, the most powerful things, I mean, you could manifest anything into your life. You are magical. Um, you are magic. But specifically with Libra is harmony and peace and it's an air sign. So any thoughts, any like epiphanies that you want to have, now is the time to manifest it. So let's jump into these cards. I'm going to pull these guys off. We'll get to them in a moment. And our tarot cards are Seven of Earth. Love this card. Ooh, Ace of Earth. Two Earth cards. Ooh, Queen of Water. I'm just going to ooh at every card, I think. Uh, four of Earth. That's four, Earth, I mean, three Earth cards. And finally, we have the Seven of 
um, seven of fire. And sorry, I was, <laughs> I was distracted because we've got two sevens as well. So very interesting. And like I said, so we've got two sevens here. So seven might be in, um, a number that is important to you this week. But we have three earth cards and earth deals with material things. It deals with abundance and money and your health. Mm, these cards, don't, the, these specific cards don't necessarily talk about health, but in tarot, they deal with health and your body. So those are important, important things. All right, let's talk about the seven of earth, seven of pentacles, seeds well planted, efforts or invest in investments that will be rewarded in the future, the need for patience, a time for resting and planning for the future, and unnecessary worry. Now, unnecessary worry might come in because you have worked so hard and planted these seeds and you are 70% there and you are just not seeing the results of it yet. So <laughs> that's why it's talking about the need for patience here. But that's where the unnecessary worry is talking about. This is a long-term view. This is... Um, the difference between us and animals is we have a, a consciousness and we are aware of time and we know that things, you know, we can plan for things. Like you're not seeing a wolf plan for things. Not really. They take down a caribou or a buffalo or whatever it is animal and they will sit there and they will eat. 26 pounds of meat today without thinking about saving that or storing it. And, and of course, they don't really have the capacity for it. We do. Um, and many of our structures are built on that capacity that we sacrifice. We might sacrifice today. Like maybe I do want to eat 26 pounds of caribou today, but I don't. I, I just hold myself back and only have five pounds of caribou. I'm, I know I'm being um, facetious here, but that I plan for the future, that I plan that I will make this last and I will have it next week, next month, next year. And that is very relevant, especially when we're talking about seeds that we sacrifice that our sacrifice is a contract with the future. And this doesn't necessarily mean to be that we're planting something either. This could be, you know, when you think about a doctor and they go to school for 12 years or something crazy like that, and that they know that at the end of that sacrifice, that they are going to be rewarded and that they are going to help others with their skills. So, that's what this is about. This is an investment, your contract with the future. Um, I also, whenever I see seeds, a lot of times I think of that um, saying, they buried us, but they didn't know we were seeds. So it's coming. It's there. You are a seed. Maybe you were buried. Maybe you find yourself in a very dark place right now, but... Seeds grow and they bloom and they become beautiful, beautiful things that you are going to be rewarded with. This is the ace of earth, um, a windfall of abundance, wise counsel or good fortune, an exciting career opportunity, a lucrative contract, significant purchases like a home or a vehicle. Yeah, this is material things. This is touch, taste, feel. Um, this is also, don't neglect your body, don't neglect your fitness. So just remember that that is in these earth cards as well. So if you are thinking of starting a fitness routine, this is your invitation to do so. Now, it's not necessarily, just this card alone is not um, a guarantee of whatever it is that you're putting your best foot forward into doing that that is going to be successful. It's not a guarantee of success, 
but that just means that you just have to keep walking and keep working and you know you are on your right path to do that but this is ideas that are ready to turn into reality next we have the queen of water so I love this card. This either relates to you or somebody that you know, um, or you know, it could even relate to both because a lot of times we surround ourselves with people that maybe you know the queen of water because she's a very nurturing, very mothering, uh, very energy. So this could be like your mother or a mother a maternal type of figure. But a lot of times you surround yourself with people like that because you either want to be like that or you are like that. You are attracting that. Um, loving, compassionate, psychic, self-sacrificing, deep psychic insights, caring for others, but forgetting to take care of yourself. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Um, trust your intuition, a deep love of family and friends, follow your heart. So if you're not exactly sure on this path, like maybe you have a couple different ideas or a couple different opportunities, it is follow your intuition, follow your heart, um, because that's what the queen of water would do. Um, she's very in touch with her feelings, even though, you know, she's in touch with her feelings, but she is a master of them. She is not um, dramatic. She is, she is very stable. And oh, another an interesting thing with, with the queen here is you have three earth cards. Even though she is a water card, she is definitely very grounded because water has to deal with emotions, but she is not, she is not crazy emotional. Um, she's very in touch with her emotions and she's very compassionate and but but she is grounded so i find that interesting too we looked at um thrones in other readings that had them um she has just pointing out here she's got two mermaids and a little cherub here so that's that goes with love next we have the four of earth managing your resources wisely extremes in how you give and receive time and money or emotions, smart business decisions, seeing things as black and white and being charitable. This card is often depicted as somebody just sitting on their money, like saving. Um, it can go either way though. Like with this, uh, I hate to say double-edged sword because it's a pentacles, not swords suit, but you, what I'm going to ask you is something that only you can answer. So your relationship with money, um, this, this talks about that being a healthy relationship. And if you, and you have to get real with yourself here, are you saving enough? Because if you are not, then you do not need this retail therapy. Um, I feel like though the queen of water doesn't need retail therapy to feel better about herself, but I'm just throwing that out there because the four, um, like I said, it could go either way. You could either be sitting on your money, saving it, saving, saving, saving. And you know, if something comes up that you really, really want and you know that you've been saving, yeah, go ahead, splurge, treat yourself. But if you do say yes way too many times, like to Amazon, <laughs> Amazon Prime Day was the other day, and you ordered a bunch of stuff on Amazon Prime Day, and you're looking on there again, um, you may want to cut it back. And that's, that's what this card is saying. Manage your resources wisely. So only you can decide if you are doing that. So be real with yourself and, and what you're doing. Like, do you really need that Chanel lipstick when we're all wearing masks? No. <laughs> so just take a look at what you're spending um, your money on and, and making some smart business decisions with it. But because you do, you know, you really have, it really feels like 
you have this command and you're really moving in a great direction, especially with material things. Um, and then we have another seven card here, and this is the seven of fire. Like people might take some shots at you. You might be on like this pedestal and just, uh, this is just some fair warning that people might be gunning for you. Stand up for yourself and your beliefs. Have confidence. Challenge those in power, but choose your battles wisely. And <laughs> I really, so choose your battles wisely. I really love this card because it talks about that. Um, oh, it also reminds me that, you know, maybe you need to put some protection around yourself and protect yourself in some way. Like you might be a little bit too open. And what I mean is on social media, uh, take a look at your settings on social media. You, I had, um, on my Facebook, you know, just as an example, I had a couple things that, a couple posts that I had public, and then I put a picture up of my daughter, and I didn't realize that it was public as well, and I had just some random weirdo person make a comment on that. <laughs> so, um, you know, when you are in public or you are, you know, you're, you are doing things, you are growing things, you are manifesting things, and these are material things, and people see that, they might want to tear you down, unfortunately. Sometimes that's how people are. Um, so protect what you have earned, and choose your battles wisely. So instead of this person who just, this random person who found me because I made made a comment somewhere and then came to my personal page. Um, instead of getting into a fight with him, I just made sure I changed my settings and blocked him. Um, so that's something to think about and something to be important that when you put yourself out there, you might attract some of the wrong types of energy but you are powerful and you definitely stand up for yourself. Another thing with choose your battles wisely, like you might see some news story that you don't like or you may like it and then you get in the comments section and people are, you know, going back and forth and complaining. This has challenged people in power. Idiots on the internet that are fighting in the comment section of some random news article, they are not people in power. Those are not, that is not where you need to spend your energy. Um, remember, smart business decisions, that's not a smart use of your time. Um, things that are black and white, you know, sometimes things aren't black and white. Like, yes, maybe you are correct, but no, maybe you don't need to, to talk about that. The other thing that it's funny that comes to mind when I see this, I think of um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the movie from the 80s. By the way, if you have not seen that, that is your homework this weekend. Sorry about that. I was in the middle of talking about this card and how it reminds me of Ferris Bueller's Day Off when um, my camera shut off. So let me go back to that. I was saying that if you haven't seen that movie from the 80s, that is your homework for this week. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving you homework. But what this card reminds me of, and I guess maybe it's just like the fast moving energy toward her, it reminded me of something that he said at the end of the movie, which was life moves pretty fast. You don't, if you don't stop and take a look around once in a while, you could miss it. And what's really funny about that to me, and um, in particularly related to this card, is that in that movie, he had several people who were running around after him trying to tear him down, and he met a lot of challenges um, to his mission, which was to just go out and 
and have fun, like one last blast. It's a very good movie, very fun. Fun, good time, you won't be disappointed. So the next two cards I have for us is Full Moon Power. I love this. She looks very Angelina Jolie-like to me. Very powerful, you know, when she was in uh, Maleficent. Um, channeling that right now. And um, Waning Crescent Peace. So these are very, very amazing, amazing cards for a week. Let's talk about this full moon. Step into your true power. Shine brightly. Do not hide who and what you are. The time is right to attract big things for yourself. Ancestral energy is important. Open your mind to larger possibilities. Big magic can be wrought. I have power. It is real. So your mantra for the week is, I have power. It is real. And you are, I really feel like you are stepping into your power, especially here with um, the material things. <laughs> I feel um, when I'm talking about material and manifesting material things, I almost hear like Madonna's material girl here. Um, remember in that song, she's talking about material things. And at the end, like because she had learned so much, now they're after her. And you are on that path to um, realizing that power. I mean, you have that power. It's inside of you. And this is just a promise of great things to come. It's not a, like I said, it's not a guarantee of the outcome. But yeah, if you keep progressing here, that power is that guarantee. The other thing though, and it's interesting to juxtapose power with peace so waning crescent peace. Peace of mind is one of the greatest gifts we can give ourselves. Refuse drama and do not freely engage with people who use drama as a weapon. Stop fighting. Allow yourself to rest for a while. When you let what you no longer need go, we make room for peace. That is wonderful. So first of all, it kind of reminds me a little bit of this four card when I was talking about like, <laughs> we're all wearing masks. So you don't need to buy that Chanel lipstick. So letting go of what you don't need, like be, if you let it go before you even buy it, that's fantastic. So making wise decisions to let go of what you don't need. Um, the other thing I talked about was letting go of drama and this card, I really see like a lot of drama coming at you and maybe some of that is not your fault, you know, and you just kind of have to deal with it, but some of it, you could be attracting it yourself. Like in my example, um, where I did not, um, arrange, you know, that post that I did with my, the picture of my daughter. Um, that was not, I mean, that was, <laughs> that was open. Like, uh, I kind of brought that on myself because it, it should not have been that way. And I just fixed it and it wasn't, it was not a big deal, but it's just something to take a look at and don't basically don't invite drama, live in your peace. Oh, before <laughs> I go back to this card, the other thing that this reminds me of um, oh, because this talks about ripples of peace, that when you are so peaceful in yourself, that basically you project that out to the rest of the world. It's very much related to this queen of water. Um, look at her. I mean, she is definitely at peace and there's ripples around her and like the vibration, the peaceful vibration that she's giving out to the world. Um, people are feeling it and appreciating that and it's kind of like a gift to the world like this gift of peace to yourself is a gift to the world it also reminds me of Mother Teresa I know I'm jumping all over the place here with with weird things but trust me it relates she said that if you want to change the world um, go home and love your family and we didn't really talk, you know, they're not talking about family here, but 
we're talking about yourself and at the core of your family is yourself. Like if you drill it down, love yourself and basically like that vibration then can um, be put out into the world. Like you cannot change the world if you are not in, at peace. And this talks about, you know, challenging people at power to really do that effectively. You need to be in peace. You need to be centered and grounded. Finally, let's get to the, our last card, Affirmation for Positive Change. And this is a really interesting here. I'm noticing that we have um, mermaids, mermaids, mermaids. So very much related to this, this queen card and they're both in water and, you know, we're putting out ripples of vibrate you know beautiful vibrations of ourselves and affirmations for positive change <clears throat> okay so change can be scary and it's basically just about making sure that you're headed in the right direction and just putting one foot in front of the other if you want to for example like your end goal is you want to run a marathon well you're not going to start that tomorrow just getting off the couch and running 24 miles that's not going to happen but baby steps here you can get off the couch and you can walk around the block you can maybe walk around the block twice tomorrow you can push yourself each day um i remember i just read a story about this woman and it was really it was really beautiful she was in a deep depression and she had just been in a car accident and she was talking about her body being broken and she went and did, I don't know if it's a seminar or what it, exactly it is, but she went, there's this guy called, his name is Wim Hof and he is the ice man and I will put his name in the description if you want to look him up because he's really, really interesting and um, he because he does really interesting things, but he teaches people how to do them as well. So one of the things that he did was he climbed Mount Everest in shorts. Yeah, I told you he's the Iceman. He also has several Guinness Book records for doing just crazy things in sub temperature water and, and all sorts of things like that. But he teaches other people how to do that. He teaches people how to live like um, how to build themselves up, body, mind, and spirit kind of things. So this woman, she was in this car accident and she knew she was trapped by her mind and depression where she couldn't even get out of her bed some days because of how she was depressed. And she found herself climbing a mountain in Poland with Wim Hof. She had trained with him. I don't know what the length of time is. I imagine it's got to be a couple weeks, <laughs> but who knows? He's, he's pretty magical. And she was climbing this mountain in a snowstorm in Poland in a bikini top. I mean, this is a woman who like had trouble getting out of bed some days. She was in a car accident and she was really injured. And even at that point where she had trained with him, like when she looked out at the distance out at the top of that mountain and she was like living in the future, she kind of got scared. Um, and it was daunting. It was a daunting task. But when she focused on just putting one foot in front of the other, doing one step at a time, like focus on the here and now, and what am I doing now? In just a few short hours, she found herself at the top of that mountain. And that is what about what this affirmation for positive changes is just one step at a time. And like a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step, but you got to keep up with it. And it's very related to this of um, earth where I said, you know, you have this spark, you have this um, magical windfall of abundance coming and you're on this path, but it's not a guarantee of the result. However, doing it and repeating it and working at it, um, that will get you the results that you want. So anyway, I think that's all I have for you, group three. This looks like a beautiful week. Um, I hope this resonates with you. Please let me know in the comments like what affirmations for positive change you are making, what, um, how you are protecting yourself, 
um, and what you are planning on manifesting this week. And like I said, this is a beautiful week for manifestation with the, the new moon behind us moving into the full moon on the 31st. I mean, we are primed to just really make our dreams reality and really understanding how powerful we are and um, just letting go of so many things and being at peace. So please like and subscribe. Hit that bell.